This year has been a whirlwind in politics. Both globally and home front, we have experienced drastic changes that have affected our lives in ways that are unthinkable. With the recent loss of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and with so much that has been fought for with both integrity, passion, and a drive that sweats respect, I thought it appropriate to mention one special lady who fought very hard for women's rights, and that is Emmeline Pankhurst. Since we'll be traveling through Great Britain today, I thought it appropriate to make fish and chips and homemade tartar sauce filled with deeds, not words, and votes for women. I hope you enjoy. In 19th century England, Britain women had few legal rights. Women lived in a society where fathers and husbands were expected to make decisions based on their beliefs and on their behalf. Born into a politically charged family, Emmeline's parents were both driven and derived by families prompting radical change. Emmeline's mother was a Manx woman from the Isle of Man, which was the first country to grant women the right to vote in national elections. Although they supported women's suffrage, her parents focused on the advancement of their sons and believed their daughter's futures incapable of doing the same. Emmeline born with an inquisitive mindset, her father was quoted saying, what a pity she wasn't born a lad. Even with enthusiasm left flat, the energy and drive of moving forward is what raised and rebirthed inside Emmeline. Recipe for deeds, not words. For our fish and chips, I'm going to prepare a homemade tartar sauce. The vegetables needed for the marinade are chopped shallots, scallions, capers, and dill pickle. After I chop them up, I am going to add olive oil, lemon juice, six drops of Tabasco, and salt and pepper. I let it sit for about 20 minutes, which then I add my ingredients to a pre-chilled bowl, along with one and a half cups of mayo and three tablespoons of Dijon mustard. I then let it sit in the refrigerator for about an hour while I prepare the fish and chips. Deeds, not words. In 1903, Emmeline Pankhurst founded the Women's Social and Political Union at her home in Manchester. Now at this time, Pankhurst believed that moderate speeches simply were not enough and that votes for women was going to take a drastic change by any means necessary, even if it meant militant tactics. Leading women to advance their thinking and lifestyle, a door of change was opened, one that shifted how women behaved and were imprisoned. Arrests were issued for protest at parliament and burning down government buildings. With drastic measures taking place and the line of women being imprisoned, a new force tactic behind bars was implemented by what was now called the suffragettes. Hunger strikes were now being enforced in 1909. Emmeline was quoted saying, if that's what it takes to be recognized as political prisoners instead of criminals, then yes. The government responded by allowing prison staff 
to force feed the suffragettes. What a disgrace. It's a form of torture, violating the bodies of exhausted women, Emmeline was quoted saying. With such headlines, a committee was formed by members of Parliament to give the women the vote. Members of Parliament were quoted saying, Our country needs unity in a time like this, so we must work together to resolve this issue. In return to this amend, the WSPU agreed to suspend their militant action. The joining forces implemented a bill for women. The draft, however, was not enough, as it only included women who were unmarried and owned property. With private criticism, the bill was eventually dropped, which prompted the women yet again on a path alone. Since we're doing a traditional fish and chips, we'll be using one and a half pounds of cod. We'll slice it down the middle of each filet. The beer batter will include one and a half cups of flour and one tablespoon of baking soda. For the spices mixed in, I added one teaspoon of kosher salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of paprika, and a tablespoon of Old Bay. To finish it off before mixing, I added one egg and one and a half cups of cold beer. I prefer Miller High Life as it is the champagne of beers. We'll then fry the cod for seven to 10 minutes in a pot of oil set at 375. While that is finishing, I'll then start frying homemade fries. I like to keep the skin on and prefer to use russet potatoes as it crisps nicely. Votes for women. While Parliament was deciding to drop the bill, Emmeline declared war outside Parliament. This resulted in, again, brutal police force and tactics. Four days after war was waged, over 150 arrests were made. And unfortunately, Emmeline's sister had a demise due to injuries from police brutality. While behind bars, Emmeline was found guilty of conspiracy as her following continued the strike. Emmeline practiced starvation tactics behind bars and threatened physical harm if approached. Charged with inciting these activities, Emmeline was sentenced to three years penal servitude. This enacted the Cat and Mouse Act in 1913. The motion to control the force and maintain appearance of not being uncivil, inmates were now allowed temporary discharge for ill health. Even with early release, Emmeline was yet again bold and arrested for trying to give petition to the king. Three months later, World War I broke. All suffragettes were released and Emmeline focused her attention to the war effort so women could be able to carry out war work. Women were employed in offices, farms, public transport, and factories, including munitions work, where they were exposed to danger from explosions and TNT poisoning. In 1918, the representation of the People Act included female suffrage for the first time. Women over 30 and who met various other requirements could now vote. It's not perfect, but this law is a significant step in our struggle. It wasn't until 1928 that women were granted suffrage on equal terms to men. Emmeline passed away later that year. Outside the parliament, where she protested so vigorously, a statue makes her life's work.
no matter what side of the pond you stand on or what side of the political race you stand on as well, I hope you can remember what we stand for as a country, a citizen, and most importantly, a human being. And now, here's the final look at our recipe of deeds, not words, and votes for women. <laughs>